At some point in your project, you're going to want to take these various views that you've been producing, i.e. your floor plans, your ceiling plans, 3Ds, etc., and actually put them onto sheets which have a title block, which you can then print out or you can create a PDF of and email to the client, for example. So in this unit, I'm going to show you how to do that. So first of all, let's talk about sheets briefly. So here's the project browser on the right, and towards the bottom, we've got a group called Sheets. Now within there at the moment I've just got one sheet so I'm going to open that view. So this is the default Autodesk title block family. Still got their, their logo on there. So one of the first things you'll want to do when you get Revit in your office is to actually adapt this or start again with a title block family. And using the family editor you'll want to make your own title block family with your own office logo etc and your own parameters here to display the project information that you need. So that is a title block family or a sheet. So that is actually what's going to come out of the printer. So unlike AutoCAD, in Revit there is no paper space and model space as such. The closest you've got is your sheets here, your title block, which are all listed in this group here, and all your various views. And you simply add the views you want to each sheet. Now there's two methods of adding your views onto your sheets and I'm going to show you both. One is quite long-winded and laborious and the other is very quick and easy. Um, but I'll leave it up to you which one you prefer to use. So the first method is to switch to the view menu and you have a sheet composition panel and on there is a button called place view. Select that button. That brings up a dialog box where you have a list of all the views, basically a replication of what's shown in the project browser there. Pick the view you want to adding. So let's say a floor plan view, level zero. Add view to sheet, hit the button there, and click to place it. The other method is to simply have the sheet, or the title block family open as we've got here to click once to select the view you're interested in, so let's say South Elevation, and click and hold the left mouse button and drag it on and click to place. I'll just very quickly run through that second method with you again because I suspect that's the method you're going to be using rather than the first one. So right click on the group name there, hit new sheet, here you have a list of all the title block families in your project. Now I've only got one listed here and it's the A1 metric size. In reality or in practice you're going to have a variety of title block families, one for each of your paper sizes. You may have different ones for different clients with their own logos on etc. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick that as a title block family. There is a blank new sheet. If we look in the project browser Notice how each sheet has a number and a name. All you need to do is right click on that, rename, and you can change the number and or the name. So I'm going to stick with that for now. Remember, the easiest way to add your views to your sheets is have your sheet open, do a single left click on the view you're interested in, and then click and hold and drag let go and click once more to place that view and just keep repeating that process. You can have as many views on each sheet as you need. However, each view can only go on one sheet. And there's an example there. We saw before how I placed the elevation, the south elevation on the first sheet. It's warning me now that that's already been placed. I can't place that particular view onto another sheet. I would need to duplicate it, probably duplicate as a dependent. And we covered that earlier on in the course. There's my duplication options. So let's just go with another elevation, go with the north one, drag and click to place. Notice how each view that you place onto a sheet comes in with what's called a view title bar. And that's the element just here below the view itself. Tells you what view number it is on each sheet. So that's the first one on this particular sheet. And over there to the right, that's the second one, for example. It's got the view name, which it's picked up from the project browser. 
and if applicable it has a scale underneath as well. Now as you move your views around to better compose your sheet the view title bar does follow it, stays with it. If you do need to manipulate the view title bar separately you can click on it, select it and then drag it to where you need it to be. So if you want to change the length of that line you actually need to select the view itself and that will bring up the grips on either end and now you can shorten the line if you'd like it just under the text for example. If you want to turn off the visibility of the view title bars i.e. you don't need to see them um, let's just switch back to that first plan let's take away that elevation so quite typically uh, where you've got let's say a single view on a sheet like a big floor plan there's no need to have the view title bar showing I would suggest because you're going to have the name of the, the, the drawing on the title block anyway floor plan or ground floor plan etc so this is just sort of duplicating that information so if you want to uh, turn off the visibility of the view title bar just hit VV brings up the visibility and graphics override now the view title bars are an annotation so you need to switch to the annotation category tab and down towards the bottom we have view titles as a category just uncheck that box hit OK and it just turns off the display of the view title bar now one neat feature Revit has in terms of sheet composition is if you're placing multiple views on a sheet and they have a relationship between each other Revit will try to align them for you or will, will show auto alignment lines to help you align them up now I'm going to just show you what I mean by that now so we've got a floor plan there if I add an elevation so the south elevation if I very carefully move along notice how that blue dotted line flashes up that is saying that that south elevation is perfectly aligned where it should be in relation to the plan above so I'll just click to place that elevation down notice how the walls line up there so the the elevation which is basically that elevation where my cursor is showing there is perfectly aligned and it's detected that between the two different views now those auto alignment lines will appear vertically between views they'll also appear horizontally so let's bring in another elevation the west one drag it onto the sheet hover over and notice it's detecting common levels so I can click to place that elevation onto the sheet knowing that the levels line through between the different views another method of composing your sheets or lining up your various views is to use guide grids so if you switch to the view menu and you look at the sheet composition panel there is an option there to create a guide grid give it a name you can have various guide grids within your single Revit project so I'm going to create a new one just go with the default name there hit OK and a grid gets added over the top of the sheet if you select the grid you can change the grid spacing and the grid name now please note only certain reference items will snap to this grid such as structural grids levels reference planes model crop boundaries for example so not um, every Revit element like walls will snap to it so you're looking for sort of common reference elements so for example we could take this elevation here we select it hit move get a point on the level and we can move it up and snap to the guide grid if we now switch to another sheet and we look down at the properties for that sheet right at the bottom guide grid it's currently set to none hit the little drop down you have a list of all the guide grids defined in your project so here's the the single guide grid we've got guide grid one click OK and there it is so now you can use that to reference uh, the placement of your new views onto this particular sheet
If you do need to make some changes to any aspect of your views once they're placed on Sheets, you've got a couple of options. You can either just switch back simply to the view in question. So let's say this plan here, we want to um, move some furniture, add some walls in. Probably be easiest just to open that floor plan view again. Make our changes, let's say, um, move that wall down. Go back to our sheet and as you may expect, that view has been updated. If it's a small change, like let's just say uh, changing the visual style, we can work directly within the view while it's on the sheet without having to switch back. That can be quite uh, useful, particularly if you've got a, a lot of views in your project browser. So it means sort of um, expanding some of these groups to find the view in question. We can quite simply select the view we want to edit and on your ribbon there will be option to activate view click on that and if you like it's gone into sort of model space it's gone straight into the view now so the view control bar comes up at the bottom and here we can change the scale detail level and all these view specific controls we do have full access to the model in this view so we could sort of uh, add windows move things along I would suggest if you're into sort of editing the model, changing any aspect of the model itself, it's probably best to actually go back into the view where it's going to be presented much larger on your monitor. Um, but this is useful for things like, you know, you just quite simply want to change the, the detail level or the, the visual style, change it. And then to come back into the sheet view, if you double click anywhere outside of the view boundary, so I'm just going to double click with my left mouse button here, it will come back to sheet view. Likewise, you can just double click straight away when you're hovering over the view rather than that single click, remember, and activate view. If I just put that away, just double click on the view, it activates it all in one go. Double click anywhere outside the view to come back to the sheet level. And that completes this unit. To get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point, you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.